Have you ever dreamed of having a 4090 and then realize you can never afford one because it costs your entire life savings? Don't worry, you're not the only one. But fortunately, there might just be a way to buy high-end GPUs without breaking the bank. And the solution is AliExpress. But why buy a GPU from AliExpress, you might be asking? Well, this online shop is home to everything you could possibly buy, ranging from $100,000 galvanized square steel to negative one cent Among Us plushies. But buried between these two are some of the best deals you will ever find. Unless you get scammed. But with only $100, getting 1,000 FPS sounds pretty much impossible. So to prove that you can get over 1,000 FPS with only $100, I'm going to overclock a $100 GPU from AliExpress until I get 1,000 FPS. But there's only one little problem. I don't have an AliExpress GPU. So it's time to go look for a GPU to buy. At first, I was going to buy a graphics card from Timu, and you might be wondering why the hell would anyone ever do that? Well, Timu is famous for sending out hundreds of free items every second, so I thought maybe they would be generous with their GPU prices. So when I searched for graphics cards on Timu, I was expecting some massive bargains, maybe a 4090 for 25 cents. But to my surprise, these cards were not even close to being bargains. Even if you ignore the outrageous prices, I doubt that these sellers would even ship these out, seeing as these photos look about as real as Playboy Cardi's next album. But to come up with prices like these, these Timu sellers have to be smoking that good pack. So with that information out of the way, the only way I would be able to get a $100 GPU is not by shopping on Timu, but on AliExpress instead. However, this would bring up a massive problem. I live in Canada, and AliExpress refuses to ship anything to Canada. I could have easily bought this RX 6600M for 75 US dollars, but unfortunately I decided I was going to live two centimeters above their shipping limits. Bro, Canada and the US are literally connected. Why can you just not ship it to me, please? But fortunately, I'm a genius. So with all my Smarticle particles, I searched for AMD GPUs and still found this pretty solid deal for an RX 6600M from Moogle or Mowgle. I don't really know how it's pronounced, nor do I care. It's a goofy f***ing name anyways. And I know it's not the Ryzen 4070, but come on, it's still a pretty good deal. And normally your GPU would be manufactured by a recognizable company like Asus or Sapphire, but nah. We got Moogle! And that means there's a 95% chance that the GPU doesn't even work. But I like those odds, so I'm going to bet my entire yearly income on this GPU. For only 170 US dollars, this would be the first GPU I added to my cart. If we compare it to some Amazon prices, you can see that regular 6600s go for around 330 Canadian dollars. So by purchasing a 6600M from AliExpress, I would save myself a solid $100 and get a very solid efficiency and performance boost compared to the regular 6600. The only slight problem is that AliExpress is 100 times less trustworthy than Amazon. So it's either we save $100 or we lose 170. But you might be wondering, why are you spending $170? I thought you were going to spend $100. Well, there are actually three good reasons why I went $70 over my budget. First off, the 6600M is only available on AliExpress, which makes it unique compared to all the other GPUs where you can just buy the same exact model from Amazon or eBay. Secondly, it would also prove that I actually did buy a GPU from AliExpress because it would be pretty easy to buy an RX 580 from eBay and pretend like I got it from AliExpress. And thirdly, I did not buy this GPU for myself. I actually bought this GPU for my dad because he wanted to start playing Black Myth Wukong and obviously the GT710 in his current PC was not going to get him that 1080p gaming performance. So not only will we try to get 1000 FPS, but we're also going to try to get 60 FPS in AAA games. Regardless, I was pretty satisfied with this deal, and the best part was that there was no tax or shipping. But that's about it for the good news, because as you all know, AliExpress is based in China, which means that they are probably going to smuggle some of that Zaza into my package, which could get my whole shipment seized. Not only that, but Moogle is a very shady company. In fact, it's not even a real company. You see this GPU right here? This is actually not theirs. Yes, I know it's very confusing, because how would it not be theirs if it has their logo on it? Well, if you take a closer look, the only Moogle-related branding is on the stickers, which are conveniently removable. Remember how I went shopping on Timu before AliExpress? Well, there's a company selling a GPU on there that looks pretty similar to the one that I just bought. But that's not it. It's also being sold on Newegg under a brand called Soyo. And on top of all of that, they all have the same boxes. Bad news, or good news, depending on how you want to take it. I already ordered the Moogle 6600M, so there is no backing out from here. The package is going to take 18 days to arrive at my house, and that is a very long time. So I flew to China. No, I did not fly to China. You think I'm Mr. Beast? What though? Since I didn't want to sit around for 18 days, I went back to Timu because even though I've been talking shit about Timu's reliability and pricing, it's all based on other people's experiences. So I bought 120 earplugs to confirm if Timu really is a scam once and for all. Why 120 earplugs? 
Well, I wanted to buy something with an exact number to see if Timu delivers what is promised. So when the Timu order arrived, I immediately counted up the earplugs, and strangely enough, I counted exactly 120, if you count this conjoined monstrosity as one earplug. But if you want to count it as two, then they gave us 121, which means that they lied and scammed me. And since they delivered exactly what I was expecting, this gave me the confidence to order a GPU from Timu, so I bet you could guess what the special package is. And I actually got scammed. It was supposed to be 200 by 150 not 150 by 200 It is now September 14th, and we got the alert that the package finally cleared customs. And boom, we finally got the Moogle. I don't know how to pronounce this, but damn, this box looks f***ing fire. I didn't think I ordered a Transformers toy, bruh. This GPU is about to and start f***ing up the Decepticons. Don't get me wrong, this box is tough, but it directly rips off of NVIDIA's aesthetic. This GPU is sticky, though. Why is it sticky? and it also has some plugs in the ports. This is not a GPU anymore, this is a freaky U. They also have a quality guarantee card, which guarantees anything except quality. It says, obtain the latest driver from NVIDIA official site or AMD official site. What do you mean I can't use it when there's strong magnetic fields and prolonged exposure to sunlight? And I have to use this product in an environment with an altitude of 3,000 meters or less. Makes it sound like we ordered some sort of nuclear bomb. Now we gotta see how this GPU performs without any overclock, but we need a PC to test it. And what would be a better testing rig than my personal computer that I use for both gaming and video editing? But this wouldn't be Electron Video if one thing went according to plan. Alright, so what are the differences that you notice straight away by looking at both of these GPUs? You are probably thinking about the size and the color. But that has nothing to do with what I'm about to say. The difference that I'm talking about is the power connectors. So this would be a problem because I have to put a 16 pin connector in an eight pin slot. It might blow up or cause a house fire, but that's not really a big deal. So I plugged in the wires, turned on the PC and the fans are spinning. So far so good, the AliExpress GPU didn't explode yet. I then logged into my PC and everything was going okay until I was greeted with a warning telling me that my PP is too small. Yo wait, who wrote this? This had me shivering in my boots but my monitor flickered and turned back on, showing us that the 6600M was properly installed into the PC. But if you recall from earlier in this video, the 6600M is still technically a laptop GPU, even though the manufacturers converted it into a desktop GPU. And now you might not think that's a problem, but it caused me to waste over an hour. Remember how a laptop can literally fit inside a PC? Well, that means that there's a lot less space to dissipate heat. So because my computer understands that the laptop GPU usually cannot handle more heat than it's designed to, it refuses to let me overclock. However, this was not an impossible issue to fix, but I first tested some games to see how much we will need to overclock until we get 1000 FPS. Starting off with something light, first thing I wanted to try was Tomb Raider 2013 in 1440p Ultra, and I think this is a good starting point because it is the oldest AAA game on my PC, and we can just work our way up to the newer, more demanding games. This is definitely a smooth experience, and I was surprised that the frame rate was smooth all the way through, which is pretty impressive for a GPU from AliExpress. Next, it would only make sense to move on to the second game of the trilogy, Rise of the Tomb Raider. This game looks super impressive despite being 9 years old, and again, a very playable experience with max settings and a bit of upscaling, and you could easily turn off the upscaling and still get around 80 FPS. And to wrap up the trilogy, we have Shadow of the Tomb Raider with the 1080p Ultra preset with XCSS quality, and with 103 FPS, you will have absolutely no problem clicking heads in this game. So far, there were no problems with the numbers, but the fans are crazy. The default fan curves make it literally vibrate my desk. So if you buy one of these laptop GPUs, definitely set your own fan curves because it does not need to be spinning that fast at 62 degrees Celsius. Next up was Fortnite, and surprisingly, without any overclock, we were already getting 1000 FPS by looking into the sky, and we were still getting over 600 FPS while building. With the insane numbers we've been seeing so far, we should be able to get 60 FPS in Wukong. However, Black Myth Wukong was a completely different story. Being the newest game in this video, with a high preset and recommended FSR scaling, the FPS was not looking great. Finishing off with 50 FPS, it's playable, but not the 60 FPS I wanted for my dad's PC. So here's where we start overclocking. The initial plan was to use AMD's Adrenaline software, but the software fully bugged out, maybe because we switched the GPU. Installing the new driver fixed that, but it introduced a whole new roadblock that I didn't account for. Normally the tuning section is where we would stress test, overclock, and undervolt the GPU, but I was disappointed to see that my GPU was unable to take advantage of those features. So I searched the internet for about half an hour, and finally came across a thread with a few people discussing the same issue. Because this was the only information I could find for overclocking this GPU, I was forced to follow the steps, even if it would break my graphics card. I'm actually taking this seriously now, so I rebooted my computer into safe mode, and uninstalled the newest drivers from my PC, 
then did a clean install of the driver that some random guy on the internet told me to install, and unsurprisingly, it worked. Something about people posting in random forums and discussions, they always have the solution to everything. You could have the most obscure problem with the most random thing, and someone out there will still have the solution. And yeah, I could not be more grateful because this man just saved the video. So here's the tuning section that I was telling you guys about earlier, and now we can finally overclock the GPU. So I set an overclock to 2512 megahertz and booted back into Black Myth Wukong, only to be greeted by this dumbass screen again. This is a very frustrating process because all we can do is stare at it and wait. After that egregiously long shader caching process, we're back in the game running another benchmark. And what do you know, we're two FPS off. Any normal or boring person would be satisfied with the 58 FPS because let's face it, that's a very playable gaming experience. But if you made it this far into the video, you probably figured that I'm not boring or normal and I'm not going to settle for a measly 58 FPS. And so, I was willing to do whatever it costs to get 60 FPS, even if it kills my GPU. It's only $100 anyways. And I know that going beyond the recommended overclock of 2512 MHz would risk the warranty of my card, but Moogle removed the product off of AliExpress anyways, so it wasn't like they were going to fix my GPU even if it broke. I really did all that just to see a number on my screen. Yeah, it's like 2am. I think I'm just going to go to sleep now. But if you want to see me optimize a $4,000 GPU until I get 1200 FPS, watch this video next.